Hey class, welcome to the first lecture here on reproducible research. Um, I want to take a minute to talk about what is reproducible research. So you might stop and think, all right, that's a dumb question. Reproducible research is research that can be reproduced. Well, there's a lot of issues that have been arising with reproducible research or with replication in general. So a lot of studies, um, their methods aren't super well described or described well enough where another scientist in their own lab or in a, a, a different lab can reproduce the results. And thus, we don't build upon the science very well because those results may have not been accurately generated. Uh, there is a famous example of, uh, well, it's kind of a repro uh, reproducible research crisis, but uh, in Britain, in the, I believe it was the early 2000s, there was a scientist that published results that said that autism was linked to vaccines. And I know right now with the COVID pandemic, we're going through another big swing in this uh, anti-vax movement. But he published these results that showed that there was a link between vaccines and autism uh, in young children. And so his results were never able to be replicated. And I've come to find out the gentleman that did this uh, was fudging his his data to get these uh, numbers that showed this. And so there was in fact no link between autism and vaccines, at least in the study that he conducted. Um, so <clears throat> with the advent of all these new technologies, whether it's uh, genome sequencing or high throughput assays, things of that nature. We generate a ton of data, but these machines are very uh, high tech, I guess is the best way to put it. And so there's a lot of different settings that need to be set identically um, in your protocol for that research to be reproduced. And in terms of bioinformatics, as you'll see uh, if you uh, go through the bioinformatics material that I uh, offer that I teach, there's a lot of different parameters that you can set in different ways. And if one of those parameters is slightly different uh, when you run it a second time, then your results may be completely different. Um, so what's really important is that we do research in a reproducible manner and there are tools that help with that, especially in bioinformatics or data, uh, data science, computational biology, etc. Um, so this unit, we're going to be talking about ways that we can make reproducible research. We can put our code out there and let others run that code uh, and see what our code did. So sometimes you read papers where uh, they say, oh, I ran this analysis with uh, DEseq or HiSeq or some bioinformatic tool, but they don't say what parameters they did. So if you try to reproduce it, you're just really guessing unless you email the authors and you ask them, hey, what exactly did you do uh, for your read length or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but this isn't a new problem. Um, this has actually been something that has been going on for uh, a long time. Um, there's a lot of articles that you can find online. This is from Vox. It says, science has been in a replication crisis for a decade. Have we learned anything? Bad papers are still published, um, but there are tools like we'll get to here in uh, a few minutes. There are tools that can help prevent this replication crisis. Um, and some of those tools are things like our markdown, uh, which we'll talk about. So. Um, if you're interested in, in looking a little deeper, I encourage you just Google uh, replication crisis in science. Um, like I said, there's a lot of articles that have come up in, in scholarly publications where they offer their critique or their idea for how we combat this. Um, and sometimes, I want to also preface this, sometimes it's not nefarious. Um, you know, there's blame to go around. Um, so the reviewers of scholarly articles um, you know, any professor has reviewed articles, at least a large majority of uh, have. Um, and the method section sometimes gets uh, overlooked and we don't demand as much transparency into the methods as we probably should. Um, and sometimes it just slips the author's minds. You're so excited about these cool results you got. You're excited about the science. You don't think, oh, I should make 
this so clear that someone can reproduce my results. And the third thing is um, there is very little, at least in the biological science, um, the human sciences, such as psychology and things like that, very, very, very little uh, benefit or uh, incentive to reproduce someone's experiment. Um, if you're in a tenure track position, you're supposed to be publishing novel research. That's what they ask for. Publish novel research findings in international journals and be a you know internationally renowned researcher, etc. Well, if you spend you know three months trying to reproduce somebody's experiment, you're generally not uh, using your tenure time, your time till tenure, uh, wisely. In essence, if you are uh, somebody that is, you know, borderline going to get tenure. If you're somebody that's, you know, a shoo-in, maybe you can, you know, uh, justifiably uh, spend some time trying to reproduce. But there really isn't a huge incentive to do it. Um, and so that kind of puts the onus on, well, let's make sure that we show our methods and show our pipelines and show our... Um, uh, analyses in a way that can be scrutinized very well during the time of publication. Um, so throughout this, keep this in the back of your mind while we go through this um, section, this, this unit on reproducible research and why it's important. Um, also, there'll be a couple videos I have on, on experts speaking on uh, reproducible research who are more keen on the information than I am. Um, I just, if, you know, I've read into it a little bit, but there are people that actually study, uh, like that's their academic job is to, to do research on reproducible research. Uh, so we'll get a little bit, uh, some expert opinions. Um, but this is an important reason to annotate your code very well, not only for you to go back and rerun your own uh, research, which is a way of re uh, reproducing the research. Um, like six months later, you go back and try to run a code, you wanna know that it works well. Um, or that you knew what you were doing, but also for other researchers. Um, because say I find a novel finding in uh, cancer and that um, because of my research findings, some startup company spends millions of dollars trying to build upon that to build a cancer treatment. Well, if my research wasn't able to be reproduced because you know, some error I made or, and people weren't able to see my methods very well, that could be a huge waste of time. Um, so yeah, that's it for uh, Intro to Reproducible Research. Uh, we'll get into ways to remedy the situation throughout this course.